Hello everyone and welcome back. In this session, we are going to learn about various representations of binary numbers. So, without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the outcome of today's session, today we will first observe the classification of binary numbers. Thereafter, we will learn about the fixed and the floating point numbers. And finally, we will observe the different representations of sign numbers. Now, binary numbers can be broadly classified into two categories, the signed binary numbers and the unsigned binary numbers. During the previous sessions, we have briefly observed unsigned numbers while studying about the subtractions and diminished radix and radix complements. Coming to signed numbers, there are three types of representations. First and foremost is the sign magnitude form. Computers designed to represent the binary numbers in sign magnitude form used to have very complex circuits. IBM used this method in their 704, 709 and 709X series of computers. The second type of representation is the signed once complement representation. Once complement allowed simpler hardware design than sign magnitude form. However, the concept of end arounding of the carry makes the adder subtractor circuit a bit complex. The PDP-1, CDC-160, 3000 and 6000 series, Univac 1100 used once complement representations. The third type of representation is the sign 2's complement. Processors like MIPS, Intel Itanium, ARM, Spark were the early predecessors of modern day computers which supported signed binary number representations in two's complement form, which made the circuits easier to implement. So these are the different forms of representations of binary numbers. Now, considering computation, numbers in general can be classified into two different categories, the fixed point numbers and the floating point numbers. Fixed point numbers are further categorized into two types. First, the integers, the numbers 1, 21, 456, etc. are the examples of integers. Now you might be wondering why these are classified under fixed point category. In order to answer that, we need to represent these in their proper format. That is, these are actually 1 followed by decimal point, 21 followed by decimal point and 456 followed by a decimal point. Basically, for all the integers, the position of the decimal point is fixed, that is, at the end. The next category of fixed point numbers is the fractions. Pure fractions like 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 0 0.123, etc. also have the fixed position for the decimal points, that is, at the beginning of them. On the other hand, if we consider some examples of the floating point numbers like 1.52, 15.2 or 456.123, etc. Observe, for these, the decimal points don't really have any fixed place. Rather, they are floating around. We will observe the representations of fractions and floating points in a different session. In this session, we will mainly focus on the fixed point integers. Let's now observe the different sign number representations. So what we will do, we will take help of a chart where in one side we will have 4 bit binary numbers and on the other side we will have the different representations. Now just so that we can relate, we are going to start off with the unsigned representations first. Now with 4 bits we are going to have 16 different numbers starting from 0000, 0, 0, 0 till 1111. Now in case of unsigned, these bit places A, B, C and D are actually wedded. That is, A is actually 2 cubed, then B is 2 squared, C is 2 raised to the power 1 and finally D is 2 raised to the power 0. Following these words in unsigned, 0000 would be 0, 0001 would be 1, then 2, 3, so on, till 15. With this representation, we can't really represent the negative numbers and therefore the name unsigned. So with n bit, the range of values which can be represented in unsigned representations would be 0 to 
to raise to the power n minus 1. So this is all about the unsigned representations. Let's now begin with the signed representations. We will start with the signed magnitude form. Now in case of signed magnitude form, the most significant bit, also known as the highest order bit, is the signed bit. That is, the MSB signifies the sign of the number. That is, if the MSB is 0, then the numbers are positive. Since this bit place is signifying the sign, using the remaining 3 bits, we can represent 8 values 0, 1, 2, 3 till 7. These are the positive ones. Now in the remaining 8 patterns, observe, the MSB is 1. When the MSB is 1, it means the numbers are of negative magnitude. Now observe, these are exactly same as these. So, 100 will signify minus 0. Similarly, the subsequent ones will be minus 1, minus 2, so on till minus 7. Now, for n bit numbers, the place values are 2 raised to the power 0, 2 raised to the power 1, so on, 2 raised to the power n minus 2, and finally 2 raised to the power n minus 1. Now, in sign magnitude format, the MSB, that is this bit, with the place value 2 raised to the power n minus 1, decides the sign. These remaining n minus 1 bits are practically weighted. Now, we know that using n bits, the maximum value that we can represent is 2 raised to the power n minus 1, that is, 1 less than the next bit places place value. Similarly, Using n minus 1 bits, the maximum value to be represented will be 1 less than this, that is 2 raised to the power n minus 1 minus 1. So the range of values which can be represented using n minus 1 bits is 0 to 2 raised to the power n minus 1 minus 1. Now this sign bit is implemented using a very interesting format. We use the value minus 1 with the exponent having the sign bit. Try to understand the logic. Since we are dealing with binary, the sign bit can either be 0 or 1. So, when the sign bit is 0, negative 1 raised to the power 0 will result in 1 because anything raised to the power 0 is 1. On the contrary, when this sign bit is 1, this will result in minus 1. So, the range can be determined by first taking this range 0 to 2 raised to the power n minus 1 minus 1. And multiplying with this, the sign bits representation, negative 1 raised to the power s. This will give us two equal sets of values. When s is 0, it will generate the set of positive values. Then again, when s is 1, it will generate this negative set of values. Interesting, isn't it? Let's now talk about the drawbacks. Observe, there are two zeros the positive 0 and the negative 0. Also, if we use this format, we need to use different circuits for addition and subtraction. So, this is all about the sign magnitude format. For n bit numbers, the MSB will specify the sign bit and the remaining n minus 1 bits will give us the range of values. To obtain the values, we can use this formula. The sign magnitude representation has two different patterns for 0. And we can't use a single circuit for both addition and subtraction. Let's now move on to the next type, that is, signed ones complement representation. Now, this representation falls under the non weighted category. Here, only the positive values are encoded with weights. As you can see, here we have 16 different patterns. The first 8, that is, exactly the half of it, will represent the positive values 0 to 7. For the negative counterparts of these, we will have to toggle the bits. Observe, 7 or positive 7 is represented by 0, 1. So, if we toggle the bits, it will become just this pattern next to it, that is, 1, 0. And it will represent negative 7. Similarly, 6 is represented by 0, 1, 1, 0. Toggling it, we will get the pattern 1, 0, 0, 1 which will represent negative 6. Then 5 is 0, 1, 0, 1. If we toggle these bits, we will get the pattern 1, 0, 1, 0, representing minus 5. Observe the bit sequence for 4. It's 0, 1, 0, 0. 
If we toggle it, we get this bit sequence 1011 representing minus 4. Similarly, toggling the patterns of 3, 2, 1, we will achieve minus 3, minus 2 and minus 1. Now observe the pattern for 0, it's 4 zeros. Toggling it, we will achieve the pattern 4 1's, which will represent negative 0. If you remember, we discussed about this problem during the session Diminished Radix and Radix Complement, didn't we? Now with n bit, the range of values which can be represented by 1's complement representation is actually as same as the sign magnitude form. But for 1's, we don't have any formula. So the range is minus 2 raised to the power n minus 1 minus 1 to 2 raised to the power n minus 1 minus 1. C. With 4 bits, we are having the least value as minus 2 raised to the power 4 minus 1 minus 1. That is 2 cubed minus 1 or 8 minus 1 or negative 7 to positive 7. The only thing is there are two zeros in the obtained range of values. Now with one's complement representation, we actually can use a single circuit for both addition and subtraction, but the circuit should facilitate the end around carry logic. So, this is all about the 1's complement representation. Let's now observe the 2's complement representation, shall we? Now, 2's complement representation is actually varied. In case of unsigned, the place values of A, B, C and D were 2 raised to the power 0, 2 raised to the power 1, 2 squared and 2 cubed. In 2's complement, there is only a slight change. The MSB's bit place is not just 2 cubed, it's actually minus 2 cubed. That is, in 2's complement, the place value of the MSB is a negative 1. So, in half of the patterns, when the MSB has only zeros, with these, we represent the positive values, that is, 0 to 7. Now, notice the other half. Observe, in the first pattern, we have 1 placed underneath the place value minus 2 cubed and the rest are zeros. So, this will represent minus 8. Notice the next pattern. We have 1's placed under minus 2 cubed and 2 raised to the power 0, which will represent minus 8 plus 1, that is minus 7. Subsequently, in the next one, we have 1's placed beneath minus 8 and 2, which will represent minus 8 plus 2, that is minus 6. Coming to the next one, we have 1's placed below minus 8, 2 and 1. So, it will represent minus 8 plus 2 plus 1 that is minus 8 plus 3 or minus 5. In this pattern, we have 1's under minus 8 and 2 squared that is 4. So, it will represent minus 8 plus 4 that is minus 4. Now, in this one, 1's are placed beneath minus 8, 4 and 1. So, it will represent the value minus 3. Observe this pattern. The 1's are placed under minus 8, 4 and 2, which means minus 8 plus 6, that is minus 2. Finally, here in the last pattern, they all are 1's. So, minus 8 plus 4 is minus 4, then minus 4 plus 2 is minus 2, and minus 2 plus 1 will represent minus 1. So, this is how the values are represented using 4 bits in 2's complement representation. Now for n bits, the place values would be 2 raised to the power 0, 2 raised to the power 1, so on, 2 raised to the power n minus 2 and minus 2 raised to the power n minus 1. Now except the MSB which happens to be the reason for all the negative values, as we just observed, with the remaining places, the maximum value that can be represented is 2 raised to the power n minus 1 minus 1. See? With 4 minus 1, that is 3 bits, the maximum value that we represented is 2 raised to the power 4 minus 1 minus 1 or 2 cubed minus 1 or 8 minus 1 or 7. And the minimum value is minus 8 or minus 2 raised to the power 4 minus 1. So, for n bits, if we want to determine the range, the lowest value would be minus 2 raised to the power n minus 1 to the maximum value, that is, 2 raised to the power n minus 1 minus 1. Now see, in this representation, we are having a single zero. That means, no pattern is wasted. Also, in comparison to sign magnitude and 1's complement, 
we are getting an extra negative value in case of 2's complement. Also, if 2's complement representation is used to represent the sign numbers, only one circuit will be sufficient for performing both addition and subtraction. So, this is all about the 2's complement representation. Let's now look at all of the representations at once. So, unsigned is weighted but can't represent any negative values. For sign magnitude 1s and 2s, the upper half of the patterns represent the positive numbers whereas the lower half represent the negative magnitudes. In case of sign magnitude and 1s, we obtain two zeros and also both the positive and negative ranges are having equal number of values. Now, 2s is weighted but the MSB specifies the negative weight. And due to this reason, we have only one zero here and also we obtain one more minimum value than sign magnitude and ones. Remember, in all these, only one's complement falls into the non-weighted category. Sign magnitude requires different circuit for addition and subtraction. Ones requires single circuit for addition and subtraction within the round carry facility. Twos on the contrary, requires a single circuit for both addition and subtraction without any end around carry logic. So, this is all about the sign representations of binary numbers. So, in this session, we first learned about the classification of binary numbers. Then we came to know about the fixed and the floating point numbers. And finally, we observed different representations of sign numbers. Alright people, that will be all for this session. In the next session, we will solve some problems to practice the concepts that we learnt in this session. So, I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.